Hello and welcome to the Fusion Payroll course from ERP Web Tutor. In this topic, we're going to learn how to define a payroll. Now, the payroll is essential. Uh, defining a payroll is essential for your uh, implementation. Um, that is indicated by a payment frequency and a processing schedule. So if it is a bi-weekly or a monthly or a weekly or semi-monthly, those are the payment frequencies. And then also the processing schedule. So we're going to talk about the processing schedule in the following slide. Uh, it contains the frequency. So what does it contain? It contains a frequency. It contains a calendar. Uh, that is the payroll schedule. And it contains the offsets and the dates. So when to calculate and cost payments. And uh, we will see the different offsets um, and dates in the following slides. Uh, when you create, the application generates the complete payroll schedule based on the payroll period type. And again, this is something we want to see as we go into the application. So this is the steps to, uh, to create a payroll definition. And you can see that the task name is manage payroll definition. It is connected to a legislative data group, uh, all of that. And this is the, the, the information that I was talking about. So when you first start to create your payroll, uh, you put a name, a consolidation group. So we talked about the importance of consolidation group earlier. Uh, we mentioned that uh, it is mandatory to have or to link a, a payroll within consolidation group. Okay, now these are the, so this is the payroll um, frequency, which is the period type that you're seeing here. So the bi-weekly, that's my frequency. Uh, it is connected with a ledger. And then um, this is the first period end date. So based on the client's schedule. So we talked about the schedule. So the system will know what is going to be the all, all the periods going forward, okay? And this number of six number of years that drives that how many years going in the future uh, the pay periods will be generated. So it automatically generates the pay periods, okay? And then these are the offset dates. Dates. So we're going to see this in the application. So date paid, date earned, all of these. And then you specify the different uh, payment methods, the valid payment methods for this particular payroll, okay? So with that, now let's go to the application and we're gonna go ahead and create a payroll, okay? Okay, so here we are in the application. The task name, as we have mentioned, is manage payroll definition. So let me search for manage payroll definition. And again, you can also navigate to the task from the implementation project. So like I said, that I'm going to switch back and forth between the task and the implementation project. So this is the manage payroll definition screen. And here we can search for existing payrolls. So let's take a look at one of this payroll. So this is the one that we're going to use when we are processing the payroll. Okay. And um, if I go to the edit mode, I can show you that, you know, how things got generated. Okay. So we have, we have given a name. Again, you can see that this name, once it is saved, you cannot modify that. You cannot change the legislative data group once you have associated the payroll with this LDG. You can change the reporting name that is going to be displayed. So this is the payroll name to use in process such as the payroll external provider extract. So this is the name that's going to be displayed on the extracts. Uh, consolidation group, period types, all of these cannot be changed once you save it, okay? And then the number of years, so this is something that you have to revisit. So let's say I defined this payroll with six years. So once I'm nearing the end of all the pay periods that got generated, so I have to extend this and then the system will automatically extend the number of periods. We talked about the different offset dates. So the date paid is the date on which an employee is paid by payroll. And then you have uh, 
when you know so six days six calendar days after the period end date so, so these are the different dates a date earned is a date used to identify the element entries to be included in the payroll so you can have an element entry in the future but you can have or in the past but you if you specify the date earned which is an input value within the element then that gets processed so that date is the important piece so if whatever the date earned um, that is included in that payroll okay okay so then the payroll run date is the date on which payroll is run planned submission date is usually the same you know that's the planned submission date that's the same as the period end date and then the pay slip availability date is the when the employee is expected to view their pay slips online okay and then the cutoff date is you know the last date on which payroll information can be entered for the pay period and this is something that you need to get uh, the details from your client okay it, it can vary from client to client uh, if it is a weekly payroll you know you might see that uh, everything has to be within two days and then the pay slip availability date can be like four days or five days something after the pay period end date okay then the last section here is the valid payment methods we talked about that and we mentioned that the system automatically generates the pay periods so if you go to the time periods tab you can see that it has generated all the pay periods uh, for the six years starting from uh, the one for the january 4th uh, 2014 i think that was the start date so if i look at the first very first one uh, i cannot find that one but let's take a look at this so the first one first period end date is 1414 so that's the first the very first so it's going to start from 15 that's the second of 2014 and then it should have created all of the pay periods until 2020 okay so this is where you can see this and um, the costing tab so this is where you can set your suspense account and default account uh, for now we are going to skip this uh, we are going to talk in details about the costing in a separate video so we're going to cover all the, the key aspects of costing uh, but now i think we have fair understanding of the payroll configuration let's just try to create and show you how things get saved so when you first try to create you click on create and then we have to select <coughs> the effective date so i'm going to select 1 1 1951 as the standard <coughs> and you can see that the legislative data group is pre-populated based on the ledger and all the other selections so if you have multiple legislative data group that has a ledger uh, then you will <coughs> be able to uh, choose the different legislative data group okay so I'm going to call this the test um, bi-weekly let's call it a weekly we already have a <clears throat> bi-weekly period so I'm going to call this EWT weekly and the same reporting name we can have that the consolidation group is going to be EWT consolidation and this one I'm going to define a weekly payroll the ledger let's select the ERP web tutor US ledger <clears throat> and the first period in the date for this one and this we can select the let's select the January Okay, so January 7th, let's call it the, the first, um, actually January 1st. So we're gonna do it, um, if we do it Sunday through Saturday, then um, we can set the 7th. It depends on what your you know weeks are. 
So if it is Sunday through Saturday, then you're going to use this. If it is Monday through Sunday, then you're going to select the appropriate date. Okay. What is going to be the, my default payment method? So default payment method is going to be check so that if somebody does not have a payment method, it's going to use the default payment method. Okay. Next, we are going to select the, the valid payment methods for this payroll. And we have these um, payment methods defined in the application. So let's select check and we're going to select direct deposit. Okay. And if you want to include any third party checks, so we can actually add the third party checks as well. So let's have it. So we're not going to print the checks and send out through payroll, but it's going to, uh, when the prepayment process runs, it's going to create that. Okay. Now the planned submission date, so that's usually on the same date. So we're going to say on the period uh, end date, the pay period end date. Uh, cutoff date, we can also say that this is the, the last day to enter um, information in the, in the payroll for that pay period. So that is the expected date is zero days. And this generates your payroll calendar basically. Okay. So you can still say that this is on the period end date, the pay slip availability date. It, we can say that it's five days after the pay period end date. So if the pay period ends on Saturday, the employee will be able to view the, the pay slip on Friday. Okay. So payroll run date, we can say that the payroll run date is going to be three days three calendar days after the pay period end date. And your date earned, we can say this is also three days. After and then the date paid the, the date an employee is paid on payroll and that's also so something that we can say that it's three days after the pay period end date and this is the number of years for which you want to generate so it's going to generate the payroll periods and this is based on the number of years that you select so normally you can select like four to five years okay so i'm going to select um four years for now And this is something you should uh, inform your client that the pay periods have been opened for the next four years. So at, uh, after four years, you know, they need to uh, follow up on this and make sure that they extend the periods. So this is the payroll time periods page. And you can see that all the pay periods have been generated based on the dates, the options, the, the offset dates that you have selected and the number of periods that you have selected. You can click on next and this is the costing information we're going to skip this for now and we are ready to submit so that should create our weekly payroll in the application and now you can see that the ewt weekly payroll has been created so that's all in terms of how you define a payroll definition in the application. Thanks for watching.